The Bronco is back. It is. Yes. And we're in uh, Central Texas where we are going to find out if you can lead a horse to water but make him drink. Oh, that could be interesting. It's about 100 degrees here in Austin, Texas. I think you're being generous. I am being generous. We are driving the two-door and the four-door. We're switching. This is the Outer Banks trim level. We'll be doing a full review coming up. But you want to see what Ford has been doing with Bronco. You're going to be impressed. It's worth the wait. It is. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. I am Lauren Fix. And I am Paul Bryan, still. Still, yes. And here at Car Coach Reports and the His Turn, Her Turn channel, we do more than just car reviews. We give you good information so that you can have car smarts and have a good time joining us on this very exciting Bronco drive. Don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. You know, it was August of last year that we were in Detroit and we drove the Bronco Sport. Right. And they had a little teaser of this going on. I know, they wouldn't even let us drive it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they just stowed us over in the right seat and they went, okay, go there and salivate. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so was it worth the wait? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, yeah, it was. Super and, impressive. And, there, and there's been so much that the company has had to get over here in the, in the past yeah. year. Chip shortage, rubber COVID, shortage. COVID, rubber. <laughs> you know, uh, steel, steel unions. Locusts. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything you could think of, it, it was roadblock. But they're, I think they waited till they did it right, and they did. We have seven trim levels here, all the way from the base entry level that you can load up, but you can't do that on their only competitor, which is Jeep. Jeep. That's yeah. it, one competitor. And why are they playing in this space, though? That's the big question. Oh, because people are going to go bat crap crazy over it. That's why, because they're going to sell a boatload of them, oh, which yeah. is why we're at a marina. Ah. ah! All right, so Paul and I are going to drive the two-door and the four-door, and we're going to switch. Yeah, he's he's on vaudeville, you can tell. And I'm, I'm even beating Navy today, so it's another naval theme. Oh, geez. They, the, the hits just keep on coming, folks. <laughs> so you want to stay with us. All right, let's get in the cars, and we're going to do some off-roading. We're going to drive it on the street in some curvy roads that you typically want to drive, like a Porsche or a Mustang and then we'll give you a wrap up at the end so stay with us till the end there's going to be a lot of good stuff don't you dare move so one of the things you get when you start with the outer banks the middle of the trim levels is you get this 12 inch screen which previous that's a smaller screen obviously so this is the same size screen you would get all the way up to the first edition love the size of the screen it has sync 4 it's the first thing you notice you get in the car like wow big screen and that is really impressive. It's nice and clear and crisp and fast. One of the things that is standard with the Sync 4 system is the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto. Of course, you've got all the apps included as well. And this system is great because it's wireless and it moves a lot faster. Now, if you've worked with Sync before, I won't go deep dive into that. We'll wait till we do the individual reviews. We're going to get different trim levels and we'll have another opportunity to do a full review with the Car Coach Reports ratings. Right now, we're just doing the first drive so you can get your first impression and get one on order. Now, some of the things as far as ordering, besides the different trim levels, you've got two different engine options, the 2.3 liter and the 2.7 liter. We're driving the 2.7 liter right now. This is, for me, the big engine is better. That is up to you. Of course, it impacts fuel economy, but you're gonna get that nice, torquey engine along with the GOAT mode. So GOAT mode means GOAT goes on all terrain. There are seven different adjustments. We've played in eco, we've played in comfort. We're now on some curvy roads here in Austin, Texas, so I moved it to sport mode. We'll also be doing some off-road. You'll get to join us on our off-road drive as well. This is over two days, so we're gonna have a lot of time in this vehicle. And I think that's really important so that we can share the experience. Part of the experience of this is making this vehicle your own. Think of it as Legos for adults. And what that means is there's over 200 over-the-counter parts that are installed at the dealer level and they can be included into your lease or your purchase. The main competitor for this vehicle is the Jeep Wrangler. Now, in order to get all these goodies and, that come with this vehicle, the larger screen, the 37-inch Sasquatch tires, which are available on all trim levels, even the base trim level, you can buy the 37-inch tires, the 17-inch wheels, and that's awesome. You get Copilot 360 for safety all the way across the board. Of course, as you go up in trim levels, you can get all the extra goodies at an additional fee. Unless you buy the first edition, you get the whole shebang which I would prefer.
prefer personally, but I like all the goodies. It's important to note that, like I said, you can finance all this, but you can't get that equivalent in a Jeep unless you go to a Rubicon. And if you've never driven a Rubicon, it's a totally different experience on the street if you're driving it as a daily driver. So we're starting off here on the roadways. We're heading off to an off-road course, which we'll be doing something with that. Now, when you buy any Bronco, you get free of charge to go to what they call the Bronco Rodeo. And that is not a rodeo like you're thinking. This means you are gonna learn how to drive this vehicle off-road. You're gonna get the most for this vehicle. And that's one of those things I find very interesting because you buy other off-road vehicles, unless you pay for the school, you're not getting the school. And if you really wanna do this off-roading, it's a nice experience, it's back to nature, you're not gonna know what you're doing unless someone's showing you. This is what Ford is giving you with it. Like they do with the high performance cars. You buy a Shelby or a GT or whatever. They're going to give you the opportunity to put a vehicle like it on track and use their vehicles rather than yours, which I actually like. We were able to get access to the base Bronco. Now, this comes in at a really reasonable price around that $30,000 range once you start loading it up with all the goodies that you want. Now, we're here at the off-road course. We're going to put this on the street. They had this one available, so I didn't want to miss the opportunity to give you an idea you're not really missing much here you've got the smaller screen the 12 inch screen is nice especially with the around view camera it sells the same goat modes and it's available in the 2.7 liter engine comes in two doors and in four doors now we're driving the two door package with the sasquatch package and you're hearing all the mud kicking off the tires because we were having these vehicles go off-road and then some of them would be transferred to the on-road for us. Now that means that you're getting the 17-inch wheels, the 35-inch tires. Yeah, it's a little louder, but this is so cool. This truck without any running boards, none of the goodies, really gives you the feel of the original Bronco. And if you had one, you definitely want to get that experience again because it's one of those things we all remember being on the roadway. It's like a stripped-out Bronco. This has roofs and the roofs go into packages and go into the bed of the truck you can take it all off you can get a soft top they've really done a lot to think about how you're using this and if you really just want a truck I want a truck I want to be able to use it as a truck this answers all those questions really easily now as far as on the road like we were saying you've got all these different modes taking it off-road in the dirt, that's when you really get to see the capabilities. Now, the only thing that this vehicle does not offer compared to the higher trim levels is it doesn't have the ability to disconnect the sway bar. But other than that, you've got the locking diffs. You can set them up anywhere you want. They're right here on the dash, super easy to use. You can make this a very functional truck with a lot less money than the first edition, although the first edition has got all the goodies, all the luxury and the technology that you'd want. And then you've got all those trim levels in between. So there's quite a few choices. So make sure to look to see what you want to do with this vehicle and then go and start building them the way you want. About 11 months ago, uh, there was a group of, uh, an itsy bitsy teeny weeny group actually, of journalists that flew to Detroit to drive the new Bronco Sport. And uh, Lauren and I went out there and we said, yeah, we like that. When are we gonna get to see the big brother? And so now here we are in Texas Hill Country. In uh, July of the following year, for our first, uh, first time behind the wheel in, in the new Ford Bronco. I gotta say, I am impressed, and it was worth the wait. Some, some you drive and it kind of feels like it's an assembly of parts flying in close formation. This feels very, very united, very uh, well glued together. Ford had a big job in front of it when it was gonna bring along another Bronco. It's so iconic, and, and if you watch any of the of the uh, auctions that are going on now. The, the old legacy Bronco that's out there is drawing huge numbers in the auctions. People want them really, really badly. I'm gonna say that this is so much better than that vehicle was, and you would expect it to be. I mean, you know, my God, it's been decades since they built that. But all of the niceties that you expect in a car now are here. 
the one that I'm driving right now is the 27, which is 330 horsepower roughly. And uh, uh, the torque number is just a shade over 400 uh, pounds foot. And we're gonna get some off-road time in it, obviously. But, you know, still the majority of the time you spend behind the wheel in this car is gonna be on road. So we wanna get a good feel for that as well. All of the controls and everything that are here, you've, you've got a 10-speed transmission. There are like seven different trim levels that are going on in this that you can buy, including my favorite, which is the Sasquatch, which I asked if they're actually going to build it or if, in fact, it's just going to be something that people say is there but really isn't. Wah, 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 wah. Stay for the late show. Lots of different trim levels here, lots of different capability, and a boatload of additional things that can be added to the vehicle at the dealer level to customize your new Bronco. But let's talk about what you can get from the factory. The screen in this one is huge. It's beautiful. And the Sync 4 system, I still maintain, is the best in the industry. So I'm loving that. Uh, it's really good. The sound system is exceptionally good. All the controls are where they are. Uh, expected to be and and even you know my my personal car is 911 so I'm used to having window controls in the center console not over on the door where most people have it so you know when, when I get into something other than a 911 I always expect things to be over there and then I go bah, dummy it's here so your windows are here in the uh, front face of the center console storage box and also the mirror controls because you may want to take the doors off of your Bronco. We're getting a lot of questions from people who are saying, what's the difference between a Bronco Sport and Big Bronco? We'll call him Big Bronco. Right, I call it full-size Bronco, same uh, thing. <laughs> well, the, well, the big boss said Big Bronco. Then so it is I, Big I'm, Bronco. I'm going with Big Bronco. <laughs> uh, so the, the thing you've got to remember is that Ford is not launching two vehicles with this. Yes, they are, but what are they really launching? Well, one's a daily driver, right? If you've got four different trim levels. Think, but... think more globally Okay, here. go ahead. They're launching a brand within Ford. It's not, yeah, Bronco's there is, is Big Bronco and Bronco Sport. They're launching a lifestyle. They're launching a brand. They're launching experiences, they're launching schools, they're launching accessories, they're doing everything. Yeah, and they're doing it right. Yeah. I think they're doing it right. They're doing what Jeep might end up finding themselves doing. Because when you buy a vehicle like this, I think you think I'm just gonna drive it, or I wanna go camping every once in a while. Yeah. But a lot of people don't realize how capable they are. And we just showed you how capable they are off-road. We did the habanero, no, we did the ghost we pepper did ghost trail, pepper. which is the hardest trail. So when you purchase a full-size Bronco, like I was saying when I was driving the vehicle, you get to come to the school. Even after you've ordered your vehicle, while you're waiting for it, you can come mm. here and drive the different trim levels. But if you buy a Bronco- And that's highly recommended, by the way. Yes, absolutely, because you don't realize how capable they are and what you can do. But then if you buy a Bronco Sport, if you buy the two upper trim levels, the first edition and the Badlands, which we've reviewed on our channel, you can come to the school here in Austin only. Yeah, there, there's gonna be four locations of these schools. There's gonna be the, the one here in Austin, mm -hmm. then Las Vegas, Moab, and then a fourth location somewhere in the Northeast and they haven't figured it out yet. Right. They aren't going to, you know, to Bob's Motel 6 and saying, <laughs> hey, can we park some cars around here and doing no, stuff? No, you're really doing This it. was all constructed. This is their school. And it's gonna remain. Yeah. So the thing is, if you don't do it right away, maybe you take delivery of the vehicle and six months later you want to do it, you can still sign up for the school. This is great here. We will, I'm sure at some point we'll get to go to all the locations. Yeah. But when you see the capability of the, of the big Bronco, even the Sport has a lot of capability. Remember, the lower trim levels have the smaller engine. And people are driving around the street and they're still using them for camping and they're still very capable. And so if you do come here for the Bronco Sport, class you will only be driving the bronco sports i think they should let you drive the full-size bronco and you're going to want to upgrade <laughs> well, they, well they probably will i think that they get 50 60 percent 
of what the car is really That's capable true. That's of doing. That's probably true with all SUVs. Yeah, I know. Just just using them for hey, we're there. rugged. We're, we can go <laughs> off road. Yeah, well, you're know, really going for yeah. a loaf of rye bread. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, so, exactly. And uh, you can put your comments down below because a lot of people yeah. comment about that on our other videos, going, "No one's taking that off road," yeah. and we're driving like you know these. And they're right. Drive you know, you got the guy with the little snaggle tooth uh, <laughs> chain on, and he's going. Yeah, you know, I can go off road and do this and do that. I said, yeah, how's the rye bread down at High V? Well, we had a great day, or two days. Two days. Driving off road, we drove it on road, we got to experience this vehicle. And, then, and we had Texas barbecue. Yes, that's one of the best things about coming down here to yeah. Austin. A lot of brisket. But one of the things is whether you're driving the base trim level all the way up to the first edition, we've driven both two door, four door, all the different trim levels. I was really impressed. We knew. If you saw our last video, which you can check out up here when we got the first look, we could see all the different variants and all the accessories. You and I both said, this is big. We knew it. Yeah. Well, it is. I mean, when, when you take, if, if you were to look at a Venn diagram of all of the different tentacles that's gone into launching this brand, these vehicles in this setting, uh, everything, there are people who are much smarter than I, I don't know about you, uh, who say, you know what, this, this is going to be big. It's going to be big. And I have to concur with them. This is going to be a huge move for Ford. I, I said it. smart move. I said it online number. yesterday, and I'll say it today. If you think Ford going to battle or war with Ferrari was a story, you ain't seen nothing. They're going to battle with the Jeep, and I think yeah. Jeep's not going to be very happy. I'm not saying Jeep builds bad product. We've driven the Gladiator. No, not at all. We've this this all. is great for this segment. Yes, because it creates competition. Which exactly. Means it's good for you. This isn't bad. This is this great. This is great for customers because then you can get the things you want. And one of the things I keep saying, all these 200 plus accessories you can get at the dealer can be installed and put into your lease or into your purchase, mm -hmm. which typically you can't do. You, you can't do. You've got to buy them separately. Yeah. Right. Anyway, and, and dealers will install all these goodies for you, and you can make it any way you want. So it's Legos for adults. And with a warranty. And, yes, with a warranty. Yeah. So if, if you go down to Phil's House of Accessories, Storm Door, Seal Coat, and HMO, you don't get a warranty with it. You're putting right. it on by yourself. Right. You get the brand's warranty. Yeah. Whatever it is. But if you get it done this way... And they're working with name brands. They're working with brands you know. Yeah. And so that I think that's really good. If you got value from this video, make sure to like and share it. And if you have any questions, there's a lot here. We understand that. I've had more questions just putting up from our Instagram posts. You can follow me on all social media at Lauren Fix. And you can follow me on Instagram and uh, Twitter at the Paul Bryant. Right. Find me on Facebook. Make sure that you don't have a thousand dollars for me for my cousin someplace. In <laughs> In, yeah, in wherever. Mumbai. So one of the things is if you've got questions, put them in the comments. Paul and I will answer them. We know that you're going to ask how to handle off-road and how we the experience. It was very interesting. Yeah. We didn't realize how capable it was. We knew it was capable, but now we know how capable it is. Yes. And, and, and impressive. The, the, the impressive mark of this is that no diapers were, were soiled in, in, the, <laughs> diapers. in the production of these videos. That means he's talking for himself, not for me. Don't forget to check out our website, Car Coach Reports, and we're in English and Spanish. We have a lot of other contributors that are also coming to this event, Javier Mota, Al Vasquez, mm -hmm. and Paul will have content as well. So everyone's gonna have content on the site, so go check out the website, sign up for the newsletter, and of course, we will look forward to seeing you next time, and thank you so much for watching. It's a cornucopia of information, so join us all the time. Yeah. Thanks so much for being with us. Take care.